Okay, guys, go ahead and pull up um, under the assignment that's due for tomorrow. We're going to do half, half of the problems together, and then you guys will have the rest of the class period to finish, ask questions, that sort of a thing, but we're going to work together. When is your test? Not tomorrow. <laughs> Next Tuesday. <laughs> it's going to be Tuesday, September 7th, okay? So we're going to do grouping today, factoring by grouping. Tomorrow we're going to factor where A is not 1. We'll talk about that a little more tomorrow. And then we're just going to practice a whole bunch Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all right? We're going to go over your quizzes on Wednesday. Um, I should have all of the makeups done so I can give them back to you. We'll go over the quizzes ask questions, that sort of a thing. But you, a majority of your test is going to be just factoring. Um, it's not going to tell you, the directions are not gonna say factor by difference of perfect squares, factor by grouping, factor by taking out the GCF. It's just gonna say to factor completely, which means you're gonna have to do all of the things. So, Today, we're going to practice grouping, all right? There's going to be a couple where we take out a GCF, but other than that, these are just grouping problems. Does anybody know when we use grouping? How many terms do we have to have in order to group? Four, all right? We are going to use the grouping method when there are four terms, so write that down, guys. All right, we always, 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 always ask ourselves. First question is, is there a GCF? All right, so if I look at number one, is there a number and or a letter that you can take out of all four of these terms? Yes or no? No. So when we have four terms, I want you guys to watch me do this, and we'll go through it a little quicker as we go. Just stay with me. But we are going to group the first two terms and the second two terms. Notice the plus sign in front of 4a, that third term. Whatever sign is in front of that term goes with that term. Put it inside your parenthesis. So what we're doing when we're grouping is just taking out the GCF in pieces to make our problem smaller. When you factor, you're making things into smaller little bits. You're pulling it apart. So if I look at just this first set of parentheses, 12a cubed minus 9a squared, what can I take out of 12a cubed and a negative 9a squared? 3, a squared. three what? A squared. a squared. Great. So I'm going to take out my 3a squared and put it out in front. I'm going to divide everything by 3a squared. Remember, show me as much work as you can. 12 divided by 3 is what? 4. four. And then a cubed <clears throat> divided by a squared gives me just a. Good. And then negative 9 divided by 3 is negative 3, right? What happens with my a squareds? They cancel out. So I'm left with just that. Everybody with me? Now I look in and I say, oh, look, the second parenthesis is already the same. But you have to take something out. You have to have a placeholder. You can't just say plus another parenthesis. What can I take out? Connor, what can I take out of 4a minus 3? Well, you can't take out anything, but we already have another 4a. Correct. And um, you can have them, you can have that times two, the 4a minus 3 times two. You can, I, I, I like the way you're thinking, but that's not the way that that works. Yeah. Hold on one second. I like the way you're thinking, but I, that's not the way that it works. I have to, I want to have the exact same parenthesis right here. Yeah. Nope, I have to divide something out. What is it? I'm going to divide out of one. I'm going to divide out of one. I'm just going to take out a one. If I divide out 1 here, divided by 1, divided by 1, I pull it out in front. Do you guys notice now how I have two parentheses that are exactly the same? Yeah. This one here and this one here. That is our new GCF. Okay, what, this is a concept that for some reason, I don't know why, it, it gives you guys some trouble. When I took out 3a squared here and here, how many times did I write it out in front? just once. The same thing goes when you group, <clears throat> okay? I have now a new GCF that of 4a minus 3, all right? We bring that out in front, and we write it one time. So I have 4a minus 3. That's my new GCF. I wrote it one time, so it's gone now. Now, what do I have left over? 3a squared plus one, that gets its own parenthesis. 
But when you guys are factoring out the GCF, you divide it out of each term. Because look, this is considered a term right here. Terms are separated by plus and minus signs. And then this is a term. So if I factor out the 4a minus 3, I just write it one time. Let's, let's do another one. Hold on. Let's, just, let's do another one. Sure. All right. First thing we ask ourselves, look at number three. What is the first question you ask yourself? Is there a... Is there a GCF, yes or no? Is there a letter and or a number that I can take out of all four terms? No. no. So since there's four terms, we're going to group. I have the first two and the second two. Now look at this first parenthesis, just these two terms independently. What can I take out of 3n cubed and negative 4n squared? What can I take out? n squared, good. So if I divide out an n squared, all right, divided by n squared, divide by n squared. I'm left with 3n, you guys agree? Mm -hmm. Minus 4, correct? All right, now look at the second parenthesis, 9n minus 12. What can I take out of 9n minus 12? Three. Take out a positive 3, right, because it leaves with a positive. When I divide out my 3, I'm left with 3n what? Minus 4. Now, what do you guys notice? Do you see how I have the same parenthesis two times? So I'm going to divide both terms, n squared times 3n minus 4 plus 3 times 3n minus 4. I'm going to divide out that 3n minus 4. What I'm doing essentially is I'm taking the GCF out. So I'm just going to rewrite it out in front here. 3n minus 4. I write it one time because we only write the GCF one time. It's gone. I, I brought it out to the front. Now whatever is left over gets its own parentheses. So what am I left with? N squared, plus N squared plus three. And there is your answer. Okay, GCF, can I take out a letter and or number from all four of these? No. no. So I'm gonna just group the first two and the second two. So just look at that first parenthesis. <clears throat> what can I take out of M cubed and M squared? m squared. So I'm going to write m squared out in front and divide out my m squared. m cubed divided by m squared is just m. What's m squared divided by m squared? One. Just 1, guys, so minus 1. Now I look at the second parenthesis. What can I take out of 2m minus 2? Two. A positive 2. Divide out 2, and I'm left with m minus 1, right? What do you notice? These two are now the same. That's my new GCF. So I'm going to write that one time out in front. And then what happens to my leftovers? They get what? They get their own parentheses. They, they, you, can, you can say combine. You can't add them together. All you can do is just write them together. But they get their own parentheses. Now, somebody just asked, does it matter? You, you can write your answer like this. These are the same things. I just always write the GCF out front. Yes, sir. <coughs> we'll, keep, we'll keep looking, all right? All right, guys, when you get to something like this, there's no reason to freak out. First of all, first, uh, somebody asked me, do I have to rewrite it in standard form? Unless you have all of the same variables. Like if it was x to the fifth and x squared and x cubed and all that. If you have the same variable with just different exponents, yes, it has to be in standard form. Rewrite it if it's not. When you have different variables in the same problem, like here I have an X and a Y, don't worry about trying to rearrange anything. Just leave it exactly like it is. Is there a letter and or a number that I can take out of 35, <coughs> X, Y, 5X, 56, Y, and 8? Yes. Not, no, no, no. not out of all four. So since there's four terms, we're going to group the first two and the second two. Notice what I did with the negative sign on 56, Y. It goes inside that parenthesis. So what can I take out of 35xy and negative 5x? What can I factor out? I can factor out a 5x from both. So I'm going to write 5x underneath, and I'm going to rewrite it out front one time. So if I divide out 5x, 35 divided by 5 is 7, and then x's cancel out, and I'm left with y minus what? 1. Good. Now, watch me for a second, guys. You don't have to write this part down. I just want you to see this, though. Watch me. 
Look at 50, negative 56, y, and 8. What number goes into both of those? I agree with negative. Okay, I agree with negative 8. Just say, I know, because you, you left with 7. Just, just think for a second. Let's just say you didn't take out the negative. You just said, oh, it's 8. Just watch me for a second. So say I take out an 8 here, right? So I'm going to put plus 8. Negative 56 divided by 8 is negative 7. Why? And then 8 divided by 8 is 1. Are my two parentheses exactly the same? No. Are they close? Yes. Yeah, they look kind of similar, but they're not. That's, that should be, that should be, that, that should make a, a bell ring in your head and go, oh, wait a second, I must have forgotten something. That's why when we first started GCF, I told you guys, if something leads with a negative, take it out. That's super duper important. Because if you notice here, God bless you. When we grouped our second term, I'm sorry, the third term in our, in our second parenthesis, it's negative 56. So you need to factor out a negative. If you lead with a negative here, you need to factor it out. So when you do, negative 8, negative 56 divided by negative 8 is positive 7y. And then positive 8 divided by negative 8 is a negative 1. Are my two parentheses now exactly the same? Yes, 7y minus 1. So I'm going to factor out the new GCF, which is 7y minus 1. I'm going to bring it out in front, write it one time. So I have 7y minus 1. And then what happens with my leftovers? They get their own parentheses. So I have 5x minus 8. So remember, when you group the first two terms and the last two terms, whatever that sign is with that third term, it's got to go inside the parentheses. Because if it's negative, you've got to make sure that you factor it out. Let's look at nine, okay? Don't be overwhelmed that there's a bunch of letters and all this stuff. Ask yourself the same questions. Is there a GCF? Can I take out a number and or a letter from all four terms at the same time? No. So I'm going to group the first two and the second two. And I look in my first parenthesis and I see, oh, I can take out an M from both terms. So I'm going to take out the M and I'm left with Z minus what? 5h squared, good, 5h squared. Now the second parenthesis, what can I take out? Negative 5n, good, negative 5n, negative 5n, very good. So negative 5n, and I'm left with? Z minus 5h squared. Do you now have the same parentheses? Mm -hmm. Yes, so my z minus 5h squared goes out in front, I write it one time. And then my leftovers get their own parentheses. So M minus 5N. All right, let's look at 11. Is there a letter and or number that I can take out of all four of these terms? Yeah, yeah good, Zach. What is it? Five. I can take out a 5 from absolutely everything. So, guys, I'm going to take out a 5 and put it out in front. So, let's factor out the 5. 40 divided by 5 is 8xy. 30 divided by 5 gives me 6x. 100 divided by 5 gives me 20y. And then 75 divided by 5 is what? 15? So, I have minus 15. All right, ask yourself the same question because maybe we didn't get, take out the biggest GCF. Is there a letter and or number that both goes now into all four of these terms? No. So now we go back to our grouping because we have four terms. That five that you took out originally stays out in front. All right, you just keep rewriting it with your answer. But look at 8xy and 6x. What can I take out of there? To what? Yep, I can take out a 2x, good. So I'm gonna write 2x, and then eight divided by two is four. X's cancel out, I have y. Six divided by two is three, and my X's cancel out, right? What can I take out of negative 20y and negative 15? What kind of five? Negative five, good. If I divide out negative five, Negative 20 divided by negative 5 is 4, and then I have y. Negative 15 divided by negative 5 is plus 3. You guys with me? All right, that 5 stays out in front, guys. 
it's still parts of this original expression. But I now have a new GCF. What parenthesis do you see repeated? 4y plus 3. So I'm going to bring that out in front. 4y plus 3. And then what happens to my leftovers? Times 2x minus 5. They get their own parenthesis. 2x minus 5. There you go. Now what would happen if I foiled this and, and distributed the 5 back in? I would get my original expression here. This one had a GCF at the beginning from the entire thing. You guys with me? All right, keep going. Doing good. All right, I want to do this one just like we did with uh, C period today because it was a good learning tool. Somebody said, I said, what's the biggest number that goes into all four of these? And somebody said, well, how are you supposed to know? All right, there's divisibility rules, guys, that some of you may have learned in elementary school. Some of you may not have. There, it, there's tricks and stuff like that. But if you don't see something right away, you have to try something, right? Can I take a two out of all four of these numbers? No. Can I take a three out of all four of them? Yeah, that's what I hear. Yeah. Okay, let's go through the numbers. Nine. Does three go into nine? Yes. Okay. Does three go into 24? Yes. Does three go into 72? Yes. Does 3 go to 192? And you guys are like, oh. Without actually doing the division, does anybody know how we can tell that 3 goes into 192? Add the digits. What's 1 plus 9 plus 2? Does 3 go into 12? Yes. yes. That means 3 will go into 192. If you add up the digits in a number, you could have a number that's like 27 digits. If you add them all up and that number is divisible by 3, then you're good to go. You can just add them up until you get one single number because we just said that 1 plus 9 plus 2 is 12, right? Well, what's 1 plus 2? 3. three. Does 3 go into 3? Yes. Yep. So I can take out a 3 here. And what letter can I take out of all four before I even start? X. I can take out an X. Good. So I'm going to take 3X. 3x, 3x, and 3x. So 192 divided by 3. Anybody? 64. Good. 3 goes into 19 six times with one left over. Then 3 goes into 12. So one of the x's cancels, and I have a y. 72 divided by 3 is what? 24. One x cancels out, so I'm left with x squared. 24 negative divided by 3 is 8. R, X is cancel. And I have a Y. Then I have minus. What's ne 9? <coughs> excuse me. Negative 9 divided by 3 is negative 3. R. And then I have 1X left over. Now, do we take out the biggest GCF? Yes. Is there a letter and or number that's still left in there? That's I can take out all four? No. So rewrite your 3x out in front. That's already taken out. That stays with us forever. Now we group. Since there's four terms, group the first two and the second two. Remember, keep that negative with that third term. What number goes into both 64 and 24? Eight. eight. Good. So if I take out an 8, and then what letter can I take out? Good. 8x. 64 divided by 8 is 8. My x's cancel, and I'm left with 8y. 24 divided by 8 is 3. One of the x's cancel, so I'm left with 8y plus 3x. You guys notice about the second parenthesis? It's like the same-ish, right? It's negative. So what can I take out? Ooh, negative r. Good. Negative r. If I divide out a negative r from both, negative divided by a negative is a positive. So 8, the r's cancel, I have y. Negative divided by negative is a positive, the r's cancel, so I have 3x. Do you guys now see two parentheses inside that is exa that are exactly the same? Yes, yeah, so I still have my 3x. It's still hanging out there. The GCF now is 8y plus 3x. I rewrite it one time, and then the leftovers get their own what? 
their own parentheses. And if I multiplied everything back together, I would get what I originally started with, which you guys can do every single time if you want to check. GCF. Six. Okay. Okay. I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad that you just said that. What number do you guys see right away? You know, goes into all four of these. Two. Two. Right. Don't even try to sit and waste time. Take out a two. Just do it. Divide everything by two. They don't all have an A, so don't tell me it's two A. So just, just take out the two, just to make our numbers a little simpler. If it just doesn't jump out at you and, and hit you in the face, start with the smallest number. What's 140 divided by two? So I have 70 AB. 60 divided by two is 30, right? A squared. 168 divided by 2 is 84, and then I have a B, and then 72 divided by 2 is 36. Now look, did you guys take out the biggest number that they all have in common? What number can go into all four of those again? 2. They're all divisible by 2, so just take out an additional 2. No worries. Divide out 2 again. This 2 that I divide out goes out in front. You multiply those two numbers together. So 2 divided by 2, is, sorry, 2 times 2 is 4. So 70 now divided by 2 is 35 AB. 30 divided by 2 is negative 15 A squared. 84 divided by 2 is 42. And then 36 divided by 2 is 18. Now, <clears throat> with those four terms, do I have any number that goes into all four of them? No. So now we can group. Remember, that four you've already taken out, it goes out front. Just rewrite it. I have my first two terms and my second two terms. What can I take out of 35AB and negative 15A squared? What number goes into both? Five. Yep, 5 and an A. Good. So 5A. Divide everything in the first parenthesis by 5a. I'm left with 7b minus 3a. Good. Now, what number goes into both 42 and 18? What is it? Yep. Divide by 6. I know. I've tried really hard for my b not to look like a 6. 42 divided by 6 is 7b. <laughs> Minus 3a. What do y'all notice? Rewrite that 4. It's still out in front. Do you have two parentheses that are exactly the same? Yes. 7b minus 3a. So 7b minus 3a is my new GCF. And then my little leftovers get their own parentheses. 5a plus b. Okay. Ask yourself the question. Is there a GCF? Yes. yes. Okay. What number and or letter goes into all four of these? Eight. eight. They all have an eight in them. Yep, they all have an X. Okay, I agree. Eight X. So divide everything by eight X. I know when we started GCF, I told you guys to write everything underneath, and you're like, oh, I could do it all in my head. When stuff gets a little harder, it's good to write stuff down. So 16 divided by 8 gives me 2, correct? x squared divided by x is x, and then I have a c. Plus, 8 divided by 8 is 1. x divided by x is 1. I'm left with y times d. Minus, 16 divided by 8 is 2. x squared divided by x is x. And then I'm left with a d, correct? Then I have negative 8 divided by 8 is negative 1, x divided by x, and then I have y, c. Questions? Can I rewrite this? Can I switch up the order? Am I allowed to do that? Can I write 2xc minus 2xd? plus yd 
minus yc. Can I do that? Am I allowed to? Yeah. I kept the signs the same, right? But now that I rewrote it, and again, I'm not going to do this to you, I promise. <clears throat> now that I rewrote it, and I knew to rewrite it because I could see that if I did rearrange it, stuff would cancel out, or I could factor out. If I now grouped the first two and the second two, do I have something in common that I can pull out? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's do that. I have my 8x out in front. What can I take out of 2xc minus 2xd? Okay, so I'm going to take out 2x. 2x, 2x. And I'm left with c minus d, right? No, you're fine. Now, what can I take out of the second set? Just a y. I'm going to take out a plus y. And I'm left with what? D minus C. Hmm. Did that help anything? Robert, say it again. Wait, Robert said, wait, shouldn't you take out a negative y? Can I just do that? Can I just divide out a negative y or a negative? Watch. Watch what happens. If I t say I take out a negative y, if I divide out a negative y, what happens here? This becomes negative d, what? Plus c. Are these two things the same thing? Yes, they are now. I can rewrite this as 2x c minus d and then minus y and then I'm, I can rewrite it as c minus d. Do I now have a GCF? Yes. yes. So I have 8x, then I have my c minus d, and then I have 2x minus y. I promise you I'm not going to do that to you on your test. <laughs> you might see something like that, though, on like an SAT or something. 19 is going to be the same way. Let's do 19 together. Just walk me through it, and then we'll be done. No, no, I'm not going anywhere yet. Don't worry. Just looking at 19, okay, it, it could give you a little like, oh, no, thank you. But let's just look at it. Let's just do it nice and slow. We'll do it together. Let's we'll see if we can figure it out. It's like a brain teaser. They all are divisible by what? Five. By 5 and an x. Okay, so take out your 5x. Anything we can do to simplify our problem, we should do. Always take out our GCF. So take out our 5x. <clears throat> yes. Okay, 105 divided by 5 is what? 21. X cancels, so I have U, V. 60 divided by 5 is 12. X is canceled, so I have V. Correct? Negative 70 divided by 5. Negative 14. Negative 14 U. And then, what's 90 divided by 5? 18. So minus 18 V squared. All right, now we just did the last one. So kind of use your brain here for a second. What do you notice? If I were going to group the first two and the second two, if I was going to group them, would I be able to, uh, can you guys see far enough to say if I group the first two and the second two, the parentheses wouldn't be the same? Let's just do it. I'll show you. First two and second two. All right, got my 5x out in front. What can I take out of 21 uv and 12v? I can take out a 3v, and I'm left with 7u plus 4, okay? What can I take out of negative 14u and a negative 18v squared? Negative 2, okay. And I'm left with 7u, what? plus 9v squared. Well, did that help anything? No. Okay. 
What happens? Can I rearrange some stuff like we did before? So let's see if that helps. Keep your 5x out. How could I rearrange it? I'm going to do 21 UV minus 18 V squared plus 12 V minus 14 U. Is that going to help anything? Five X, group these two, see if it helps anything. What's 21 UV and minus 18 V squared, what do they have in common? Okay, I can take out a V. What about what, any numbers? If I take out three, if I take out three V, I'm left with seven U minus six V, okay. What can I take out of 12 V and a 14 U? If I took out a two, I'd be left with six V, what? Minus seven U. Hmm. Those are almost the same thing. What did we have to do in the last problem? Take out a negative, right? We took out a positive two. If I take out a negative two, this becomes negative 6v and a positive 7u, which I can then rewrite that, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I still have my 5x. Inside I have 3v and then 7u minus 6v minus 2, and then I have 7u minus 6v. Now do we have a GCF? So I've got my 5x. I have my 7u minus 6v. Oh. All right, so our GCF here is 7u minus 6v. And then what's left over is our 3v minus 2. And that is our simplified answer. Guys, something <coughs> like 17 or 19 will not be on your test. Just giving you a heads up about that. Robert, good job.